you're on the watch for the active ear. Hello and welcome to another edition of Jazz Watch. Your friendly neighborhood jazz crusader here, the watchman Greg Bryant, here for another several minutes of jazz information and more. You can catch us on our mother's site. You see and visit, listen to all of our archived episodes. That place to find us is jazzwatch.wordpress.com. You can reach out to us via Facebook as well, facebook.com slash jazzwatch. Follow us on Twitter and uh, also use the email if you want to reach out that way. That's gbjazzwatch at gmail.com. So glad to have you back for another edition of the show. It's been a long hiatus, sort of going through some uh, some changes, but um, things are settling down and so glad to be back in the saddle. We've got some great shows coming up for you in the coming weeks, and we want to get right down to business right now with a great interview uh, taped just a couple of months ago this summer with uh, an interesting player. Those of you that aren't familiar will be familiar after this. Stacy Dillard, Stacy Dillard, tenor saxophonist, soprano saxophonist, and composer on the New York jazz scene, the international jazz scene, as a matter of fact. Um, He's got several um, incarnations of uh, musical ideas, but we're going to talk to Stacy about his matriculation in music, um, arriving in New York, uh, his thoughts on uh, certain topics like, you know, um, learning tunes, perfect pitch and so forth, as well as uh, the current state of of jazz and players that are developing through the ranks uh, of education as well as on the streets. Uh, very interesting, interesting observations from one Mr. Stacy Dillard. Let's go to a bit of music right now featuring one of his projects, Brooklyn Circle. This is a trio. Uh, Diallo House on bass, Ismail Wall on the drums, out front on tenor saxophone, Stacy Dillard. And in just a few moments, our conversation with Mr. Dillard right here on Jazz Watchers. The Oars truly the Watchman. <laughs> too man you know a lot of cats come into the music one or two ways it's kind of like they hear it and it forces them to participate or they got really great band programs in the schools when they was coming up in high school middle school how how was it like for you man what kind of uh pulled you into the circle (laughs) hearing hearing it not that we we didn't have no great program like that hmm no. Uh, yeah, like, directly we had to circulate through our eight schools, six elementary schools, the middle school, and the high school, and then you know, and I, I started 
high school. So he didn't, you know, he, he didn't have the time to really sit down with me and, you know, like, okay, this is A and this is C and this is, you know, at the high school level, it's like, all right, we got to get ready for this halftime show, this football game, we got to get ready for this state competition, we got to get ready for this competition. <laughs> You know, this yeah. parade, this, you know, there wasn't no time for, you know. So, you know, I, man, I, I kind of, I picked up easy. I, I did have, I had one book, man. I, I really this saxophone had this one book. That's the class book, and the illustrations was, like, on point. It showed me how to put the horn together, hmm. how, to, how to hold it, how to put your hands, you know, just following that. I figured out how to where to put everything mm-hmm. and uh and i you know like by the end of that day that that was like mimicking stuff off the radio wow all right like after the first day you know it was it, it, was, it felt like a a, a a super advanced video game or some shit like that <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Man, that's 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 really that's really interesting, man. But like you mentioned, <laughs> hearing it too, man. Like what in the Dillard household, man? When you were growing up, man, what what kind of records did, did you gravitate toward, man? What did you hear? Man, I heard. Well, I tell you one thing. I I didn't really hear no straight ahead jazz like at college. But before that, it'll be you know everything that my my, my folks listen to. You know, Rita Franklin, Bobby Bland, listening to some. Bunch of seventies music, you know, like, like Mary Ripperton and all them cats, you know, and uh, my older brothers, and my older sisters, they was in the hip hop, you know, the eighties hip hop and all that stuff, and uh, and R and B as well, like, the music of the nineties and, and gospel music, you know, I, I I was pretty open then, but I wasn't necessarily searching for different kinds of music. I was just introduced because for one, I could never control the radio station. I could never you know, I was young so they you know <laughs> I, it was it was over for that. <laughs> like, when you better listen to what it was on, like, you know, that, that was that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so are you the baby? Are you the youngest? Yeah. Youngest of five. Wow. Wow, yeah. that's cool, man. That's cool. So, man, y- you got to college, man, and, and you kind of started to hear some, you know, some cats stretch out on, on their instruments, you know, jazz wise. Like, right. I guess what gripped you about the expression um, that made you see where you might have a, a place in it, or what what made you kind of pull towards the way of, of of that type of expression? Uh. Well, I'll tell you what, first first day, when I went to college, man, I didn't even realize that you could major in music. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know that. Hmm. Till, you know, I was about to do this computer engineering thing, you know, that that was going to be me, and I was going to play on the side, you know, and just get better that way. Then I'm like, oh, they got music programs up in here? Okay, hold on now. It's changing the game up. So, <laughs> so, you know, I got in it, got to, you know, Central State University and Wright State University, and, uh, did, you know, Dayton, Ohio area, and, uh, yeah, bro, I, I, I jumped in, and then they was giving me the stuff to do, and they was introducing to me all these new people that were you know, new to me, you know, and then I just, I, my mind was really blown then. You know, especially the first time I heard Trent, you know, Cold Train. Mm. And uh, my boy, uh, Martin Kelly, he's a tenor player from Cincinnati, but he live here now. As a matter of fact, he's the reason why I'm even here. So Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he the one introduced me to him. I was like 19. I remember that. He gave me a... He gave me a... Uh, no, I was 18. I was 18. I was 18. He gave me a CD. Gave me a gave me a Coltrane CD on a prestige label, the one just just titled Coltrane. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I put that joint in, man. My car rolling around. I lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my mind. You know, first first of all, he gave me the CD. I was kind of vibing. I was like, man, who is this man? Who is this nappy, nappy head dude on this cover, man? 
yeah. And, you know, that was that was really me there, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, he said, just go and check it out, bro. Just go and check it out. Wow. I went in and checked it out. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. That's heavy, so, man. That's that's really heavy, and and it's cool, man, that you found a, a, a cat to, to to put you on. And I guess the first time, man, I actually heard you. Um, I used to have a broadcast radio gig. Well, I've had one off and on for about fifteen years, but I'm doing this this podcast thing now, Jazz Watch. But back when I was on broadcast radio here in Nashville. There was a cat named uh, Luke that used to send me down the Smalls studio uh, recordings that they would make. Oh, Luke Caven? Luke Caven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my man. Yeah. Yeah, man. He sent me one, and I was floored, man. I was uh. instantly floored, man. I'm, I'm a big Donald Edwards fan, and that 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 was one of the things that I was. But I was like, man, this cat, Stacy Dillard, man, he he's coming a, a different way. And the first thing, man, I recognized about you was your sound man your sound is different than a lot of the 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 cats coming through some of the more you know popular schools you seem to have really valued having a beautiful you know full-on tone first and and i guess it's not so much of a question man but could you elaborate on the importance of like finding your own breath and your own identity in that woodwind instrument if you don't mind uh well i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna separate the tone from it okay. first the tone aspect um uh, man it wasn't until i met jd allen really hmm. and i was up here when i playing alongside him and hearing his tone hmm. you know and i'm like man hold on what what's what what my horn don't sound like that <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, wait, 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 hey, turn it out, man, turn it out, man. What's going on? <laughs> so, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm how I am. I'm picking his brain a little bit, you know, figuring out what to do. I went ahead and applied it. Hmm. And uh, so, it, 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 you know, it went too, too long ago. I mean, because when going through college, man, I, I thought, you know, I was considering soprano my main instrument. Okay, and, okay. And I, and I didn't even get a tenor until, like, I graduated. Wow. <laughs> I, I was playing on a school tenor. I was playing on a little marching band tenor. Mm-hmm. You know, I got a marching band and played tenor instead of alto. Mm-hmm. Just just for that, you know, just so I can have one. Wow. And um, so that's that's what did that for me as far as, as, far as uh, approach was concerned. I, I, that came from me not ever being in a setting where somebody was telling me, yeah, you can't do this, you can't do that, mm-hmm. you should do this, you should do that, yeah. you know, and, and and to me, what, what, what it seems like to me is that, you know, you, 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 you holding people down by doing that, by not letting them, like, fully explore, you know, Hmm. I mean, the, the the love for what is, for what's going on can be there or it can be developed. We kind of need room for that. I see that, that's probably the big difference that I see between me and people that came to schools. Because man, you know, I I've said this in the past and I say it now. It's like when I hear certain people play, I can tell what school they went to. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's like like damn like. I know where you. I know where your enrollment is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. yeah. it's kind of, and it shouldn't be like that. You know, right? It, should, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be like that. Like, right. it's like everybody competing to sound like something, hmm. instead of just, you know, doing doing them, and then they and then get mad when you try to tell them. <laughs> sure. You know, so it's like, all right, that's cool. You know, so yeah. I just. It, you know, it comes from learning real loose, man. I, I, I just, I heard it, and I tried to play it. It was that. <laughs> and uh, as far as learning how to read music, I learned lo- note by note. Mm-hmm. And then, and by listening so much, I developed, I developed perfect, my perfect pitch, what, do you, what people like to call it, which I believe that everybody has. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's another. That's another total story right there. That's another. That's another interview all by itself. <laughs> but, sure. But uh, but yeah, man, it, it was just like that. Just just keeping keeping it simple, you know. It's it's it, damn with twelve notes. Sure. You know, come on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, make make them do what you want them to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's but that's interesting where where you took that, and I I would have to agree with you. I've said the same thing to several people that I believe that everyone is is born with the perfect pitch. It's oh my of, dude, you know what I'm saying? And it's just uh, one of them things that they have to identify to basically you know trace it out. Of themselves, which they already have, but but go ahead and touch on that, man. You're just your 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 right. belief in that. Mm-hmm. It's 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 like it ain't necessary. The thing that makes it so stifling or whatever is because we gotta remember these note names and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's you know, that's almost equivalent to like your taste buds, but you but you require to know every little ingredient that's you know what you taste. Mm-hmm be able to break it down but you know it's like i've, I've proven it to a bunch of people like I'll, I'll like tell them like it's just a it's a combination of memories plus your emotion attached to them yeah you know it's like yes. like you gotta you gotta go you gotta go in that place and pull it out of you and like i'm like what's your favorite song and then you know then somebody will tell me i'm like do you and then it gotta be something that i remember too so i can mm-hmm. like ask like Okay, you remember the first note on the first track of that, of that CD because mm-hmm. you love that junk so much? Mm-hmm. And, and then they'll say the note name. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, sing it. And then they'll sing it, but they won't sing it the right note. They'll yeah. just be like, ah, ah, mm-hmm. ah. I'm like, no, nah, that ain't it. Mm-hmm. So, this, so I'm like, this is where the perfect pitch is. Just go back to that song. Just go in your head. I'm like, you know, you remember the, you remember the sweetest sound you ever heard? You can remember hearing that. You remember prettiest girl you ever seen you can remember how you can see her right now if you try hmm. you, can, you, can, you can smell you can smell apple pie if you wanted to right now yes you know yes so it's like go in there and listen to this to the cd or the record or whatever you whatever you heard it on just go listen to it and then sing the first note yeah yeah and then they, and then like that is that everybody i've done that too they end up doing it I pull yeah. it right out of yeah. They'll either sing it or whistle it, you know. Yep. Like that's the pitch right there. Now that's the A you was looking for. <laughs> like, look, that's the pitch right there, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then they're like, "Oh man." Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Just blew my mind, dude. Yep. You know, I get that all the time, but I'm always <laughs> met with, the, with, with, you know, you know, skepticism at first. It's always, it's always, that's 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 always happening. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Like, oh man, now get out of here, man! You, 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 you was born with it, man. Whatever. That's what I look like to you? I got. You think I got a tail and, 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 and two horns or something? Come on, man. Yeah. Got, yeah. Oh, got man. little little bat wings on my back or something? No, nah, man. I'm, I'm a mutant. I'm just. I'm, I'm here, man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so right, man. You read my mail. We gotta do it. Open a business. You confirmed so many things right there with that. That's that's amazing, man. That's that's exactly what what I believe in, man. For that, but man, you touched on something else too that I want to return to. You said um, um, there was a brother actually that handed you that first train CD. That's kind of the reason why you followed up to New York. And one of the things I've also noticed about you uh, is your loyalty. Uh, to your friends and, and for lack of a better word let's just say you know posse because the Brooklyn Circle situation you guys have fellowshiped on and off you know on your crisscross uh, release from a couple of years ago good and bad memories there's cats on there that you kicked it with um, and still do same thing with one you know and I've heard you mention you know um, the, the the contrast between cats who you know, go after the career versus, you know, the love of the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's probably more than one question that I'm asking, but just to kind of break it down, um, who are some of the first cats, again, that, that led to you establishing yourself in New York and, and, and the associations with them that remain close to this day? If you could maybe just highlight a few of those cats for us. All right. The, the most influential 
I gotta go with first of all, this cat I live with, <laughs> uh, Jerry B. Clemens. He's a drummer, mm-hmm. composer. You know, band lead. He has a band called uh, Soul Understated, and uh, as well as like the first couple CDs of mine. I had two CDs out before one. One called Elite State of Mind, and one called C5. C5 was a band name at the time. That's when me and J.D. Allen were, were both playing in the band. And, he, and it's me and J.D. Allen on those two CDs. Right on. And uh, Jeremy, Jeremy's on drums. And, you know, Bean, as everybody call him. Uh, I mean, Salim on bass. And my boy, uh, Ryan Weaver, but he's back in North Carolina now on piano. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so, 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 Bean, because, you know, he... He opened me up to a whole lot of conceptual things with the music. And it's funny because when I when we first met and it was the first time we played together, <laughs> I remember telling my other boy, I was like, well, I don't like this dude, bro. Whatever. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't feeling it at all, you know. And then I saw him again on a day when I was feeling kind of weird, you know. So I was playing exactly how I was feeling. And, and he was on drums again, but I didn't realize it until I turned around because I was, I'm like, man, whoever this, you know, whoever this drummer is, he's listening like hell, yeah. you know, he's like, he's like in my head, and I'm loving it. So I turned around, it's him, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Mm. So then we rap, went and had some breakfast, uh, you know, and actually, that's a different group than Brooklyn Circle. Brooklyn Circle is, is a totally different group. It's funny when I when I when I heard um, when I heard him the first time, Jeremy, I was with the bass player Diallo, and then when uh, the second time, I was with the drummer Ismail, and we went out we went out to have some breakfast and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you know that that was that was cool. So him for one, J D Allen was was definitely another. So it's good here. Uh, I'm gonna say when I Harper helped me out a lot. Wow, Eric Reed. Uh, uh, I mean, people that who's who's you know who, who really gave me things that I'm that I really hold on to and that I really that I really start to apply. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was that, and that's you know that's a. Uh, you know, it's a few. Oh, Tavon Pentecost. Okay. Another tennis player. Yeah, how can I do that? But then, you know, that's that's more recent. You know. Sure. Sure. And uh, and we also have a collaboration going on. You know, uh, a group that we play as Smalls regularly um, on the late night session on Mondays. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, so we we're we're trying to get that popping. And what's uh, the name of that one, Stacy? What's the name of that one? That band with uh, I'm sorry. yeah with Tavon and what's the name of that group? Well, that's 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 the debate part. Gotcha. So, it's, so it's, we we we're trying to we haven't ironed anything down yet. Gotcha. We're we're kind of rolling with something, but I don't want to say it. Sure. You know, in the event that we might not gotcha. really roll with it, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's cool. Well, who who's the rhythm section normally in that one? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, it, yeah, uh, my man John Chen on piano. Sure. Bad boy from mm-hmm. my from my west from L.A. Uh, Spencer Murphy, bass player mm-hmm. from Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lawrence Leathers, drummer yes, from yes. Detroit and Lansing. My yes. homeboy, even though I'm from Muskegon, but you know that's close enough. <laughs> sure. You know that's the rhythm section. And myself and Savon, I'm playing mostly soprano on that band, uh, and then Savon's playing tenor. Man, keep keep us posted on that, man. That that sounds like a party. Oh, it, oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's that's incredible, man. man and and could you t- talk a little bit too about like uh, adjusting, kind of the adjustment to New York? A lot of cats come up there, um, rightfully so, you know, with the best intentions, but you know they're not able maybe to to stay. Um, New York is 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 a butt kicker, you know, as we all know. But right. um, man, you, you've been in the trenches and and you're 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 staying the course, and folks are starting to kind of look up from their sleep and see, hey man, there's this cat we got to check out, Stacy Dillard, man. How how did you adapt, and and how how do you kind of stay 
con- connected and, and thriving in a scene like that? Um, it's it, 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 you know you just gotta be cool. <laughs> you gotta be cool, and you and you and you gotta be seen. <laughs> and, hmm. you, and you definitely gotta be playing, and you know, and just. You know, like in the very beginning, man. You know, when when I moved here, I I hadn't even visited yet, so I just came. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I just I was like, all right, I'm coming. I, I made a decision. Two weeks later, I was gone, hmm. and I was here. So you know, I just went around place to place. You know, didn't say too much, but I wasn't trying to be. You know, I was just being. You know, just reserved, but not shy, so to speak. So I would just go to places and. You know, figure out how things work, sit in the jam sessions or whatever. People would hear me, you know, would give me a little gig. I wouldn't turn down anything in the beginning, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm taking all kind of gigs, all kind of crazy stuff. Sure. You know, with, with, with people that can and cannot play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, I just, just kept doing that. and But every... Every every time I you know every time I be at a session I wouldn't gauge it as like well, it's just a session so I ain't really gonna play you know I wouldn't do that and some people would mm-hmm. and I'm like I don't understand how you can do that mm. I'm like if I'm if I'm you know I don't care if we're in a men's bathroom and and it's a it's a jam session in there if we playing I'm playing sure. you know sure mm-hmm. you know I'm, I'm, yeah I ain't, I ain't on no half assing you know right <laughs> right so. And that paid off too, because like all all most you know all the gigs I got it came from playing at places with somebody hearing you, mm-hmm. getting your number or hear uh, getting your number from somebody else, uh, you know, some something, you know, yeah, somebody, yeah. So you know, just time doing that, you know, and you know, I'm an easy going dude, man. You know, I don't, you know. I, I hardly have any problems with anybody. But, you know, I will slap you if <laughs> if, if there's a problem. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> no, I'm just but, but you know, uh, but you know, anybody that know me, they know I'm I'm cool. I'm, I'm I'm and I don't care who you are. I don't care about. I don't I don't treat you based on your status. I don't care about that. Right. You know. Right. Like, you you're either cool or you're not cool. Sure. And that's it, you know. I got that. We stranded on a we stranded on an island mentality. Mm-hmm. I know you're a doctor and you're a lawyer and you're this and you're that. It don't matter. Y'all better help me get up these trees and get these coconuts down. Right on. You know, it right don't on. matter. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know. <man>. So <laughs> totally. So that's 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 you know, and and that 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 helps too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That helps too. Wow. wow. So, Man. This is, it's important to have good energy on the bandstand, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it it certainly part. is. Certainly yeah. is. Man, and, and that's that's kind of where, where I wanted to take it the next. You know, you've played a lot of bandstands now around the world uh, since you've been, you know, in, in circulation. Mm-hmm. What, what are some things that you like? Uh, about venues in general, and what are you some things that put, could be improved upon in some of the places that you play? Well, well, you know, each each individual venue is like a is like a person itself, you know. And I I can't I can't generally speak about a venue. All I can say is that you know a venue is on its hip. It's only as hip as his honor. Mm. <laughs> it's only going to be as hip as his honor, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, you know, if the if the, if the, if the owner's going to buy into something like, you know, jazz performances in this bar, and that's going to be the thing. That's the main thing. You know, learn how to treat them. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, things like that. Don't mm-hmm. don't don't. You know. Don't treat it like the help. Some sure. players will, sure. will, will, will do that, you know. And I'm like, man, hold on. What am I here to do again? Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. But, but for the most part, you know, you you get what you give as well. So yeah, 
it's a you know it's a it's still a, it's it still can be a reciprocal process, but you deal with certain folks. You deal, you know, it's it's nah, you know, mm. certain 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 places I just can't deal with, and and it's and then it's always people that really know nothing about the music itself. Mm-hmm. From a not, they ain't got to be musicians, but just you know, not even like. Avid listeners, you know, it could at least be that. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, and that's, that's, I've, I've seen some cases like that. Mm-hmm. You know, people that got the, they got the energy for it, and they, but, but they didn't do enough homework, or mm-hmm. they're trying to do too much at one time, mm-hmm. and, and taking wrong turns, you know, and things like that, like, Doing this before you sh- before you should have done this, mm-hmm. and 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 setting people under. So it's yeah, man. It's it's a lot of things like that, but they're usually just you know personal. It's mm-hmm. not like a it's, it's it's not like a you know like well these are these guys over here mm-hmm. and this is what you know. No, nah, you can you know you can put some in the same category, I guess. But it'll still be different in some way. Yeah. So as far as improving, um, the only thing that'll improve it, well, and some of the, and some of the pay rates can improve. I say that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How could I not say that first? Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> that some places are, will take care of. You know. I've, a lot of cases I'm in, I'm taken care of, so it's cool. Um, uh, Ty, what was I about to say? Uh, Red slip on my. I had, I had another point. You were talking about just about oh about it being just more 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 personal. Sure, sure. You know, more ex- exclusive things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like this this issue I'm having comes from this club because of this person. Right. You know, you know, it's always something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's always something. Sure, sure. We you know, we we dealing with human beings, so that's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Not, yeah, no, no. It's the, I appreciate the the insight about that. that's a question I always like to ask um, because you know jazz, the the music in general is becoming more global. You know, and there's mm-hmm. lots of different types of audiences um i guess in one way you could lament the fact that you know there may not be a you know a current you know kansas city sound or a current you know nashville sound or but still there are folks interested and it's just really really i'm curious about you cats that travel um and see still different sets of people and, and and different models and and i guess too a thing that's changed um you know, since we've come up, you know, I'm, I'm basically in the same generation that you are seeing like the destruction of the, the recording industry and, you know, rebuilding uh, towards more of an independent model. Um, I guess, how are you you know, addressing the issue of, you know, I'm writing this music and I want to record it, but we're trying to, you know, do you wait for the right situation? Do you do a Kickstarter? How, how, how kind of do you feel about all, all of that? Just getting your music out to the people these days. I, you know what, I, I think it's cool, man, just because, you know, the techno- technological advances, that's what's making it possible. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you got a recording studio in your lap, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, you, you it's, it's just making it possible, and it's a lot of talent out here, man, mm-hmm. and a lot of record labels, you know, shutting things down, you know, it's a big turn. It's a big change in the game, you know. We, everybody was shocked when Bradford and you know, and, you know, got got dropped from Columbia, and now everybody got you know was getting dropped from Columbia and whatever label they were on. Mm-hmm. You know, and these are the these are the big dogs, you know. And it's like, mm-hmm. whoa, yeah, like you know, like what's going on? Mm-hmm. And then you got the problem of people always trying to tell you how to play your music. Hmm. 
You know, I can't stand that. I, I you know, I, 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 that upsets me mm-hmm. very much. I'm like, man, mm-mm. You know, just get out of here. Get out the kitchen. Get out the kitchen. <laughs> you know, just just wait for your wait for your meal, man. Just stay, sure. just stay out the kitchen. Sure. <laughs> sure. You know, I, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so you, you you don't have to worry about that. Uh-huh. With, with doing it on your own, there are things you want to consider if you want to, like you got to consider keeping your tracks a, a certain length for for radio play, mm-hmm. or for kind of you know yeah. whatever the possibility may be. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, a composition, a certain composition you write, it might not be meant to be short. Got it. Well, man, I, I know you've been on the hustle, man, but I, I appreciate you for uh, making a time to uh, be with us here on Jazz Watch, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for sitting with me. Uh, my pleasure, brother. My pleasure. The sound of Stacy Dillard on Jazz Watch. Prolific, prolific player. And hope you enjoyed our conversation with him. Uh, taped just a couple of months ago. Um, be on the lookout for Stacy and his various projects uh, and incantations. He plays live uh, around New York, but also internationally. He's getting around more and more these days. If you get a chance to catch him in concert, make sure you do that. Stacy Dillard on Jazz Watch. Yours truly, the watchman over the microphone. Thanks so much for checking out the podcast. As always, tell your friends, help us spread the gospel of this thing. We're trying to get the word out about it and so glad to be back in the saddle. A great, great series of interviews coming up over the next several weeks. You're going to want to check it out. And uh, make sure to find us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash jazzwatch. We're on Stitcher. We're also on iTunes, of course. Our mother site is jazzwatch.wordpress.com. Feel free to leave your feedback. What do you want to hear? What do you want me to talk about? Any ideas that you have? I'd love to know them. Reach out. Also email gbjazzwatch at gmail.com. We're on the watch for the active ear at Jazzwatch. Right on. Right on.